So as we continue on with looking at the bone tissue and the skeletal system, we're going to look at bone structure. So a typical long bone, this diagram is of the femur, a typical long bone has generally two parts to it. You have an epiphysis, which are the ends of the bone. Uh, they are made of spongy bone. Uh, you can see here at the top you have the proximal epiphysis. At the bottom you have the distal epiphysis. And then the diaphysis is the shaft of the bone. The shaft of the bone contains the medullary cavity. Uh, it's composed of compact bone. And this is where uh, this is filled with the yellow bone marrow. Between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, you see an area that's called the metaphysis. This area is where bone growth occurs. So as we are growing, as from birth to um, approximately late teens, uh, maybe early 20s, uh, this is the area where bone growth occurs, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Looking at the other side of this uh, diagram, uh, back at the top, we have the articular cartilage. Uh, articular cartilage is connective tissue that cushions bone-to-bone -bone connections. So on the top of this uh, photo, you're seeing the articular cartilage of the head of the femur. And so it is going to cushion uh, the connection between the femur and the acetabulum uh, of the hip socket. So going down from that, you see the spongy bone, um, where the epiphysis is at. And then just below that, you see the epiphyseal line. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the area of the metaphysis where bone growth occurs. And we'll talk about how bone growth occurs at that epiphyseal line. Once bone growth stops, that epiphyseal line hardens and it becomes uh, uh, just a marking uh, in the bone. Just below that, you see the area where the red bone marrow is at, which is actually in the uh, metaphysis. And then below that, you have the uh, endosteum, which is the inside lining of the bone. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the shaft of the long bone is composed of compact bone. Um, and then also the shaft has the medullary cavity, which is where the yellow bone marrow is at. On the outside covering of the bone, you have the periosteum. The periosteum is a fibrous connective tissue that uh, covers the bone, protects the bone. And then you also have a, uh, you have nutrient arteries uh, as well as, uh, as veins that will go in and out of the bone uh, with blood supply and carrying um, uh, various things back out of the bone, such as uh, the red blood cells, white blood cells, um, and various types of minerals. And then, of course, at the very bottom, where the femur articulates with the knee, you have the articular cartilage uh, there as well. Looking at flat bones and how they are structured, uh, this example is showing a uh, piece of the skull. So on the outside, you have uh, the periosteum. Uh, on the outside and the very inside, you have the periosteum. Uh, they cover, it covers both sides of the bone. And then you have compact bone under that. And in the middle, you have spongy bone. So getting a little closer with the bone structure, uh, you see, again, um, taking this example of the femur um, and sort of looking inside and seeing what's really there. Uh, you have the, uh, the top of the di diagram that you have the articular cartilage that shows. And so I'm going to go down the left side of the diagram first uh, and look at the periosteum. And you can see that the periosteum has two layers to it. Uh, the very outside layer is a fibrous layer. Again, this is for protection. Um, and the inner layer of the periosteum is a cellular layer, um, which will provide new um, cells for the periosteum, as well as um, 
be a source of repair should the uh, bone or the, the periosteum become injured or damaged. So the primary bone cell is the osteocyte. And so you see that in this diagram as well. Um, remember, anything that has osseous or osteo in the name is dealing with bone. Site refers to cell, so you have a bone cell. Looking at the, uh, the right side of the diagram, you have the endosteum, which is inside the, uh, inside the uh, compact bone. Uh, you have the endosteum, um, and then I'm not interested in you knowing all of these cells. However, you need to understand the concepts. So um, you have the osteoclast, and then you have the bone matrix, um, which is the, uh, in this case, the compact bone uh, matrix of that. You have osteocytes um, here that show, again, bone cells. Um, Osteocytes do not have the ability um, to go through mitosis, which is cell division, which is how uh, much of the body's cells um, actually regenerate. Um, so within the bones, there are osteogenic cells, which are stem cells. And so again, osteo meaning bone, uh, genic referring to genesis or beginning. Um, and you'll see that uh, a lot throughout the various parts of the body. Um, so an osteogenic cell is the beginning of a bone cell. So those are stem cells. And we talked about stem cells uh, in, the previous, uh, in a previous chapter. So bone markings are very important. And this um, uh, chart is in your book. Um, so I'm going to touch on a few of these. Actually, I'm probably going to mention most of them. Um, so you have articulations, which is where two bones meet. So any place where two bones meet is considered an articulation. That's why in an earlier slide we showed the articular cartilage. So these are where two bones meet and there is movement uh, between those uh, two bones. Um, the head is a prominent rounded surface. So an example of that would be the head of the femur. Um, a condyle is a rounded surface, so you have the occipital condyles, uh, for example, in the knee joint. Um, you have projections, which are raised markings. Uh, an example of this would be the spinous process of the vertebrae. Um, you have protuberances, uh, which are uh, bones that protrude, so such as the chin, for example. Um, you have spine, this is not necessarily talking about the spinal column, um, but you have um, any place there is a sharp process on a bone is called a spine. So, for example, uh, the ischial spine in the uh, pelvic area and the hip area. Um, you have tubercles, which are small rounded processes. Tuberosities are rough surfaces. Um, typically where bones, or I'm sorry, where muscles will attach to bones. Um, an example of this is the deltoid tuberosity. So that would be where the deltoid um, connects to a bone. Um, you have a variety of lines, uh, such as the um, epiphyseal lines. Um, an example of this would also, as the book gives, is the temporal lines of the parietal bones. Um, so these are slight elongated ridges. You have crests which are ridges, such as the iliac crest. Um, you have holes. Um, an example of this would be uh, a foramen uh, where a blood vessel passes through a bone. Uh, moving down the list a little bit, you have canals, which are passages in bones, such as the auditory canal. You have fissures, um, which are slits through bones. Uh, foramens uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, these are holes through bones. For example, the foramen magnum in the occipital bone. Um, and you also have a marking called a meatus, which is an opening into a canal. So you have the external auditory meatus. Um, so as you read and uh, learn about these various structures, 
their terminology and markings will give you clues about where they might be and what they do and, where, and what they look like. And then you have sinuses, uh, which most of us are familiar with sinuses. Um, they're air-filled spaces and bones, such as the uh, nasal sinuses. So bones contain a relatively small number of cells. Um, these cells are entrenched in a network of collagen fibers. As I mentioned earlier, bone cells have the prefix of osteo. So anytime you see this, you're dealing uh, with something with a bone or bone cells. As I mentioned earlier also, the osteocyte is the primary cell of a mature bones, the most common type of bone cell, although there are other bone cells as we showed earlier. The osteoblast uh, forms the bone matrix. Um, and these, as I mentioned also earlier, these two cells are incapable of going through mitosis. So you have the stem cell, which is the osteogenic cell, which is how new bone cells are actually formed. And then you have the osteoclast, which uh, resorbs bone, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So um, compact bone is the most dense and strongest type of bone. It's found in the diaphysis of long bones and under the periosteum. Spongy bone is also known as cancellous bone, so you may see or read uh, or hear um, either one of those terms, spongy bone and cancellous bone, uh, are, are the same thing. So these are composed of a lattice-like network. Um, they form along lines of stress to provide strength, and they contain the red marrow where hematopoiesis occurs. So hematopoiesis is where um, uh, red bone cells are made uh, to keep the uh, body in a state of uh, hemostasis. So looking at blood and nerve supplies of bones, uh, the spongy bone and the medullary cavity receive nourishment from the arteries that pass through the compact bone. So um, as you can see here, you have a variety of areas around the bone where veins and arteries um, actually go into and out of uh, the bone. The nerves follow the same paths as blood vessels. So the nerves aren't shown on this diagram, but they follow the same paths. So you can see you have a variety of uh, nutrient arteries and veins. Um, you have the nutrient foramen there in the center. At the top, you have the epiphyseal artery and vein. So the names of these, a lot of these uh, arteries and veins will give you, and this is common throughout the body, uh, the name of the artery or vein will give you a clue as to where it's, uh, it is located at. And then with uh, bone formation and development, we're not going to hit this real heavy, but again, you need to have the general concept. Um, embryonic bones form from cartilage templates. So this, again, this diagram is in your book. As you see from the top, uh, this is kind of a circular, uh, half circle diagram, uh, which starts at the top uh, as an embryo. And as the um, embryo and fetus grow, and then as we are born, uh, you see how the bones uh, tend to change. Uh, by the time the fetus is born, most of the cartilage has been replaced with bone. So the bone is initially cartilage as an embryo. And then as we're born, most of that cartilage has been replaced with bone. Uh, some additional cartilage will be replaced in childhood. And some cartilage remains in adults. As we know, we have cartilage injuries um, to a variety of locations in our body. Sometimes. Some terminology um, that you'll want to be familiar with, uh, some I've already talked about with the um, bone cells. Um, the term ossification is the process of bone formation and hardening. So ossification is the process of bone formation and hardening. Um, and the prefix chondro uh, has, is, is dealing with cartilage. So anytime you hear the, um, see the prefix chondro, uh, you're dealing with cartilage. So there are some disease processes um, of cartilage that you will see this with, um, as well as some other things within the uh, skeletal, skeletal system. 
So let's look at how bones grow in length. So the epiphyseal plate is the area of growth in a bone. Cartilage forms on the epiphyseal side and ossifies on the diaphyseal side. Bones grow, I'm sorry, bones continue to grow in length until early adulthood. The rate of growth is controlled by hormones. This is why in adolescence we have a growth spurt. Um, as we are about to hit puberty and hitting puberty, um, there is a uh, rush of hormones uh, that do a variety of things. And one of those is that it controls uh, the growth of our bones. When bones stop growing, bone replaces the cartilage at the epiphyseal plate. And all that remains at this point is the epiphyseal line. And this epiphyseal line is usually visible uh, on x-rays. So as you can see here on the um, left side, you have the, an epiphyseal line, um, which with on this uh, femur, you can see it going right through here. Um, on, you can see parts of it here on this tibia and then parts of it here on this fibula. Um, the epiphyseal plate, this is uh, with a, uh, someone who has, uh, where this has not hardened yet, so the bones are uh, still growing at this point. So you have the epiphyseal plate here of the femur and here of the tibia and then also right here of the, um, uh, the ulna. So bones obviously also grow in diameter um, and they continue to, uh, the growth in diameter continues after bones stop growing in length. Uh, this process is called modeling, and as an adult, bones undergo what's called remodeling. About 5 to 10% of the skeleton is remodeled each year. 